Well, for more, let's go now to the Gulf, to Dubai, and speak with Camelia Entek Habafar, the columnist and political analyst. Camelia, how are Saudi Arabia and its allies likely to react to this new step by Qatar uh, renewing its ties with Iran? I'm not saying Saudi may take the harsh position or its allies because the things has been changed since uh, June 4th when the boycott begins and the Gulf, uh, Saudi Gulf allies has been boycotted Qatar. We have to remember this decision sending back the ambassador back to Tehran by Doha has been taken a day after when Saudi and Iran both have been announced which their diplomat has been granted visa to go to Saudi and to Tehran to visit their embassies in order to restore their diplomatic ties. So if Saudi and Iran wants to make that up and diplomatically, there shouldn't be any issue for Qatar because 20 months ago has been summoned their ambassador back to Doha because of the Saudi and Iran sovereign relations. And for Saudi Arabia, priority has been changed in the past two months ago, the situation in Syria and Iraq and the post-Daesh is more important than uh, paying attention um, for Qatar and Iran restoring the diplomatic ties. Well, let me ask you, Camille, if the ties with Iran are no longer as uh, uh, urgent as an issue as they were for Saudi Arabia and its allies, what are its other issues with Qatar? Do they want it to shut down Al Jazeera, stop its support for, like, the, for the groups like the Muslim Brotherhood? Is that what they want out of Qatar now? I, I guess so. And not shutting down whole operation of Al Jazeera, but some of the programs has been uh, has been in the center of the problem. The program promoting extremism and Ikhwan al Muslimin, the Muslim Brotherhood. But I want to say I am here in the Gulf and I'm seeing the situation has been calmed down since two months ago. It's not any longer is the headline this Qatar crisis with Saudi Arabia. The border has been opened to the Qataris pilgrimage to can go to Saudi Arabia to perform Hajj. Iranian pilgrimage has been started going to Saudi Arabia for this year Hajj. And everything has been so much shifted. Now for Saudi Arabia looking into having their interests served in Iraq in post Daesh and challenging Iran, uh, Iran authority at this country, it's a more main concern. How long Qataris merchants and business Business people with the deep root in uh, UAE and in Saudi Arabia can resist this boycott. This is another challenge for Qataris. Well, since you're saying the conditions have changed and are more favorable to some kind of reconciliation between the Saudi coalition and Qatar, how do they actually get about doing that without, in a sense, losing face? How do they back down off of these, uh, these branches that they've gone out on? It's difficult to say one day we are waking up and we are hearing everything has been normalized. It's over a year or months, we could say it can be slowly to, to be resolved, but in the uh, core inside deep between the countries, they cannot continue to to having such a attitude towards each other. The GCC cannot expel Qatar for several reasons, because the United States were supporting this union in order to reducing Iran's uh, ability and also uh, in interferences in the region. And at the same time, Qatari's interest is not getting along with Iran and with Turkey. Everything is politicized at this time. It was it never Qatar and Iran had such a great uh, relationship with Iranian could travel to Qatar easily. Even now, at, in the past two months ago, Qatar has been reworked several countries needing visa to visit okay. Qatar. But Iran Camelia, I want to thank you for joining us uh, from Dubai on I-24 News.